Sulfur. Sulfur. Sulfur! I have to go back to Ivoire. Phantom Brave, we meet again. Greetings, everyone. I'm Prince B. Can you believe it? I've been making videos for a whole year now. To celebrate this milestone, I thought it'd be interesting to look at one of my favorite games of all time. That game is Phantom Brave. I really loved this game when it first came out, but how does it hold up? Let's find out. Prologue. Background information. Phantom Brave is a tactical RPG that originally came out in 2004 for the PlayStation 2. It was developed by Nipponichi Software, who is perhaps most well known for the Desegia series, which I honestly know nothing about. It was eventually remade for the Wii in 2009 under the name Phantom Brave, We Meet Again, and was also remade once again for the PlayStation Portable in 2010 in Japan and 2011 elsewhere as Phantom Brave, Heroes of the Bermuda Triangle. For the purpose of this review, we'll be looking at the Wii port, which, while it has an additional mode, we'll only be talking about the main story mode that's present in all three iterations of the game. With that out of the way, let's start the actual review. Chapter 1, Story and Character Right off the bat, you can probably guess that this game is pretty plot and character heavy, as is often the case for RPGs. It starts with a short prologue in which we meet three Chromas, who are mercenaries of sorts, Hayes, Jasmine, and Ash. They are on the Island of Evil when they meet a powerful foe who kills them. With his final breath, Hayes uses his power to revive Ash to watch over his and Jasmine's daughter, Morona. He isn't powerful enough to fully revive him though, and Ash comes back as a phantom, a spirit that is trapped between life and death. Eight years later, Morona has grown quite a bit, and now follows in her parents' footsteps, working as a chroma to provide for herself. She is able to do this by using her unique power to summon phantoms in battle, confining the spirits to objects and giving them a temporary physical form. Most notable of the phantoms is her guardian, Ash. Because of this, however, she is often regarded as cursed by others, and called the Possessed. Still, she perseveres, holding true to the belief her parents taught her, that if she works hard and treats others with kindness, one day they'll come to accept her. This is where the main story begins, which is split into four chapters, which are further divided into 20 episodes. It follows the kind and sincere Morona, and the occasionally overprotective Ash, in their quest to help the people of the Land of Ivoire, earn enough money to purchase the island they live on, as well as attempt to get others to come around and accept Morona. Along the way, the two encounter a variety of other characters, both friend and foe, such as the Chroma Oxide Walnut, who attempts to steal away Morona's jobs and values money over his own life, or Sprout, the great warrior whose heart is filled with darkness and seeks revenge for what he has lost. All the while, shadows are spreading over the land, and rumors of the return of a demonic being known as Sulphur who terrorized the land 30 years ago. The only one who could stop Sulphur at that time was a warrior known as Scarlet the Brave, who had the power to seal the demon away. On occasion, our heroes will learn a bit about the legendary Brave and search for them. That's about all I want to spoil as far as the story and characters go, but I can say that both are absolutely fantastic. The world building is also great, via characters, multiple locations, the story, and so on. Further, many of the characters have personalities that are complex and motivations that become revealed as the story progresses, based on their backstory and relations to other characters. The game also has a pretty great sense of humor that works well to lighten the mood when things start to get a bit heavy. Lastly of note, the scenes are for some reason called demos. Don't skip them, they aren't actually tutorials. With all of that said, let's discuss the presentation. Chapter 2 Graphics and audio. In terms of graphical presentation, the game looks pretty good. The various story mode backgrounds are beautiful with great detail. Each character has many sprites, each wonderfully expressive, if not a bit out of place and blurry. Regardless, I like it and think it looks kind of unique, although it may not appeal to everyone. 
On the audio front, the music is absolutely wonderful, having one of the most beautiful soundtracks I've heard from a game. Each one perfectly fits the mood and situation it plays in. The game is also voiced during cutscenes, and the VA work is top-notch, with some rather well-known voice actors playing the roles of some of the major characters. Next, we'll move on to the gameplay. Chapter 3, Gameplay. The first thing about the gameplay that you need to know is that this game is not easy. You'll likely need a lot of grinding if you don't want to resort to quick leveling exploits and strategies. Further, it doesn't do a great job of teaching you beyond the basics. And as is natural for an RPG, it's fairly slow to start, however the difficulty wraps up fairly quickly. Phantom Isle acts as the main hub from which you can heal, create, and equip your phantom fighters. Or you can make an entire island of bald middle-aged men. Phantom Island is also where you can check letters and newsletters via the mailbox to give more backstory on characters and happenings in the story, as well as provide some foreshadowing for future events. This is also where you select stages, so it's important to keep in mind. Battles themselves are turn-based. Speed affects more than just turn order, as faster characters may get more than one turn before an opponent. Resource management is important, as you can run out of turns for phantoms on the field, which in turn means you can be left without fighters, and Morona isn't exactly a powerful character. Further, you can also end up running out of confinable objects. Even with proper leveling, this helps add some strategy to the game. In addition, there are various types of terrain, such as some that are icy and smooth, which allow you to move farther as well as terrains that are very bouncy, which makes it hard to get an exact position. There are also bonuses for which item you can find a phantom to, such as weeds giving a higher speed stat to the phantom you summon. And some field items even offer protection effects, such as increasing your offense or lowering another stat. Some even make your phantoms permanently on the field once summoned. Battling is fairly straightforward. You select an attack and use it on the enemy. However, you can also equip various items, and each item can give different attacks as well. These items range from the typical tomes, axes, and swords often found in RPGs, to the more absurd, such as pumpkins and fish. You can even swing other combatants around as weapons. However, you have to be careful as enemies will attack you on their turns, if you're holding them. Finally, in terms of post-game content, there's a good deal, and it's insane, requiring upwards of thousands of levels to beat. I certainly don't recommend it. Most of it isn't even all that relevant to the story, and instead focuses on DeSegia characters who are making cameos in this game. If you're a fan of that series, maybe you'll find it interesting, but as someone with no knowledge of that series, it just came off as pointless and frustrating due to the large number of hours I needed to put in to make any progress, with little to no relevant reward. That's a pretty basic overview of the gameplay. So now, let's briefly discuss the ideas this game presents. Chapter 4, Ideas and Themes. This game presents a variety of themes. While I think you really have to journey with Morona for it to take full effect, I'll briefly outline some of the more prominent ones here. First and foremost is Prejudice and Discrimination. They are both shown towards Morona as well as the Putties, a type of monster regarded as thieves of the forest. Morona's belief that she can change people's thoughts on her is shown throughout the game as she slowly befriends many characters with her sincerity and kindness. By working hard and genuinely fighting on behalf of those who hate her, she does bring them around. I'd also like to point out a few parallels between characters, as it really helps to emphasize some of these themes. Firstly, Morona and Canary, a man who claims to protect monsters. While Morona is sincere in her desire to help protect misunderstood monsters, Canary, who claims to represent their best interests, is quick to anger should they do anything that goes against his own agenda. Likewise, Ash and Sprout both desire revenge on Sulphur, but while Sprout essentially sells his soul for it, Ash is grounded by his desire to protect Morona, and her desire in turn to protect the people of the world. Recognizing that while Sulphur needs to be stopped, hating him won't bring back those he's taken. This illustrates the futility of revenge and the power of forgiveness, as well as the importance to pursue alternate means of resolving conflicts. Again, that's just a brief overview of the ideas this game tackles. 
but it's enough to give you a general idea of the ideas brought up in this game. Now, let's finally move on to the verdict. Final Chapter Verdict Phantom Brave is a wonderful game with a beautiful story and great characters. Further, both the graphics for cutscenes and the music is gorgeous. While the gameplay can be a bit repetitive, as is the norm for RPGs, and it doesn't do a great job of teaching beyond the basics, it's still plenty of fun once you get the hang of it. Further, it has plenty of important messages that can warm your heart. Phantom Brave receives a happy ending. While it's by no means a game for everyone, I highly recommend checking it out if the story sounds appealing to you. And while I can't advocate going through the entire post-game, the main game is certainly worth looking at. So that's Phantom Brave. I think it still holds up really well, despite some of its clunky mechanics. That's all for today. Until we meet again, I'm Prince B, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, and consider supporting this channel by subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. I have other reviews, like my review of Splatoon, as well as amiibo collecting videos. As always, your support is appreciated.